Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how I restored this old steel casement window from the 40s. It was in rough shape. The window didn't seal properly, all of the weather stripping had rotted away, and there was a large hole in the concrete lip under the crank here. So in the winter, the cold air rushed into the bathroom with nothing to stop it except some paper towels I stuffed into it. I mean, it worked! There were paper towels stuffed under the window crank for almost seven years and no one knew except for me. It was still drafty and hard to open and close, though. So I started stripping the paint with citrus strip and chiseling out the old glazing that was almost as hard as cement. It was a lot of work, but eventually I was able to see the steel frame. I also took apart the crank, handle, and screen frame clips so I could clean those too, which is why the window is gorilla taped closed here. I used a block of wood to hammer the old glass out. Two of the three panes came out whole. One of them I had to smash to bits to get out. It wasn't as fun as you'd think. Now I can really get in there and clean it all down to the frame. Lots of citrus strip. I used bubble wrap and Gorilla Tape to cover the opening when I wasn't working on it, so some light would still come through. But it's windy in the desert, and it had to be retaped constantly. Look at this poor little thing hanging on for dear life. Life's hard in the desert. At last, the window frame is all clean and ready to prep for paint. I'm using mineral spirits to clean off the last bit of citrus strip oils. And now 99% alcohol to clean the mineral spirit oils off of the steel. I'm painting the window frame first with an oil-based metal primer. It's really thin, goes on easily, and looks great. After a 24-hour cure time, I can paint the first coat of white oil-based paint. This one is not so great. It's thick but drippy at the same time. The wind's picking up the drips and it's flinging them around. Kinda like this. On day three, I can do the second coat of white, but this time we thinned it. The can says to only use acetone, but that makes the paint dry faster and I didn't want that. So we used a splash of paint thinner. It's made with mineral spirits so it won't dry as fast while I'm working on it. This got a better consistency. The paint went on thinner and smoother, then straight out of the can. If the paint goes on too thick, the window will have the same problems as before, where it doesn't close properly, and that's exactly what happened. This one little area here was too thick, and when I went to close the window the next day, the paint just peeled back because it hadn't fully cured. So it kind of fixed itself? I'm gonna just leave it since that's as thick as the paint can be in order for the window to function properly. I've painted the outside white, but the inside I want black. So I'm taping off the part of the frame that I want to stay white. Now I can paint the inside black. I didn't tape off by the painted adobe, I like to paint my edges by hand. Plus, the adobe is too textured to tape off anyway. Here's the first coat of black, thinned with paint thinner. You may notice I switched to cardboard because the bubble wrap just wasn't cutting it. And a day later, here's the second coat of black going on. Now let's look at the hardware. This is after I stripped the paint and cleaned everything with mineral spirits. Still a little sad looking. I considered electroplating the parts, but decided to just polish up the steel with the polishing bits on my Dremel. Here's the crank mechanism all polished up, and the latch, and here's the difference between the original screen clips and the polished ones. I don't know if they're oxidized or zinc plated, but for now I'll just leave them raw and see how they do. Here comes the fun part, putting the shaft of the crank back into this channel. I should probably mention I don't actually know the terms for any of these parts, so if I'm calling it something stupid, feel free to correct me in the comments. So now, putting the thing back together, yay yay yay, I'm so excited, just gotta get that thing into that other thing. 
I finally got it in and moving, now to screw the latch to the frame. And I found out why there was a big chunk missing out of the concrete lip. We had patched it and made it level when we prepped the wall for paint. But because of the way the crank goes into the channel on the frame, the base of the crank has to slide horizontally into position and this lip for the screw hits the concrete lip. So I busted out the Dremel and started grinding away the concrete we had just patched. That's okay, it's just a little dip, not a gaping hole to the outside world. Thank goodness for modern tools. Here's the latch going in. A little WD-40 and it's up and running. Which brings us to weather stripping. Back when I had just painted the second coat of white and found out that the window was rubbing in this spot, we also noticed that the frame was sagging. See the gap at the top? I pushed the frame up as hard as I could and after a few tries, the hinges were bent enough that the window is flush and level again. Now take a look at how tight it closes. There's no room for weather stripping here. It looks like there's a gap, but that's just the shiny new paint. This window seals up tight without any help other than a good cleaning and realignment. What a beauty. At the same time that I was painting the window, I also painted the frame for the screen. Then I installed new screen. The original was metal and the original splines were also metal. I had to use a screwdriver to pry up the metal spline, which is basically just a thick wire. Then I used pliers to remove the spline from this little channel inside the screen frame. The new screen going in is fiberglass and I'm using a vinyl spline, which is like a hollow spiky noodle. I cut the screen a few inches bigger than the frame so I have some wiggle room. I got the smallest spline available but I think it was still a bit too big. It was really hard to get in there. I used a screwdriver to really jab it into the first corner. Then this crappy spline roller to guide it into the rest of the channel. This thing feels like it's going to fall apart. I would not recommend getting this one. Go for a wooden metal spline roller instead. I'm having to go over the spline several times to get it to go all the way into the frame and hold the screen securely. Other than the crappy roller, the screen is easy to work with. It wants to stay straight and when it's pushed into the frame under the spline, it tightens up nicely. I used an X-Acto knife to cut the screen right against the frame. It's really secure and looks great. Much better than the dingy rusted metal. It's held in place with these little tabs that just swing over the frame of the screen. I had the glass professionally installed. I think the quality leaves something to be desired. I originally wanted all dual pane glass, but I was swayed away from that. Most people who know windows warn that the steel frame eliminates all the good that dual pane glass would do, and I would just be wasting money. So we went with a quarter inch single pane glass. We also considered textured glass since it's a bathroom, but the view is so nice it would be a shame not to see it. So we'll just put up curtains instead. I just need to touch up the paint where I carved out the concrete lip. A light coat of primer, then two coats of gray, and a little watered down shadow modeled in there to blend it in with the rest of the windowsill. This is the smallest casement window in our house. The rest are at least 16 pane. Either Rallis or I will try to do the glazing on the other windows. It's going to be a massive undertaking, over 80 panes of glass. But that's much farther down the line. 
We still need to refinish the door on this bathroom, install the flooring, and do the myriad other finishing touches. There's a lot of work left to do in this 45 square feet. Just wait until you see the mirror. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing.